What is up everybody, Visual Timmy here, and today we are going to make a pattern brush inside Procreate. In regular fashion, there is cat hair all over my desk, the iPad's about to die, so let's see what we can cook up in the few minutes that we got. First off, I'm going to start by opening up Visual Tribe, and if I come over here to Spaces, and over here to Pro Downloads, you have to be a pro member to see this, but if you are a pro member, you'll get all these downloads. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way down here to Brush Builder. And the Brush Builder has like three gigabytes worth of texture scans for patterns, brushes, whatever you're going to need them for. And they're already organized and ready to go. So if you are a pro member, go ahead and scroll down, download the Brush Builder zip, and you will have all of the textures that we're going to rock with in this video. First, I'm going to show you what we're going to be making. Here's this brush that I made. That is a starry pattern. It's got a little bit of texture to it. And the best part about this brush is that it's perfectly seamless. And the second best part about this brush is that when you lift up your pencil and re-put it back down, you can actually build the opacity on the pattern without having it overlap with itself. Some pattern brushes, as soon as you lift up the pen and place it back down, it is going to overlap the pattern in a really goofy looking way. And unless you have a very simple pattern that looks well overlapped, you're probably going to want to know these settings. So let's start by going into our brush window, pressing the plus sign to create a new brush, and you see we have the standard Procreate brush. The first thing we're going to do is come over to Grain Source, edit that, import a file, and right now I have the VT Brush Builder favorited on the side so I can see that right off the rip. And we're going to go ahead and choose a grain source because we are in the grain editor. Now you can scroll through and find a grain that you like, or you can make your own seamless pattern or find another seamless texture somewhere on the internet. I like this Z bonus pattern tile three. So this is what we're going to use for the video. And as you can see here, we have the pattern inserted. And this is perfectly seamless, which means that this part is going to connect with this part and this part will connect with this part without any lines or seams or anything goofy like that. So first off, we're gonna press with two fingers once on the screen. What that's gonna do is invert the texture. So we want these white lines as our paint marks. We don't want the lines to be thick like this. We want the thin line as our paint. Once you have that selected, go ahead and press done. Now you can see we have a pattern. And you see there's a little bit of a white grid here. That's just because when I exported this texture, it left a little bit of the grid behind. And we can easily remove that by scrolling down here and coming to brightness and contrast. If we pull the brightness down, you'll see that that, that little grid goes away. If we turn it up, you'll see that it totally overfills the pattern. We don't want that. We just want to get rid of that little white box. Perfect. Now we have our pattern set up. But as you can see, when I lift up the pencil and replace it, it's going to reset the pattern in different positions. And we don't like that. There's one magic button that solves all of this, and that is the Texturize tab right here. Once you click on Texturize, your strokes will no longer overlap in your pattern. If we take the scale and drag it down a little bit and we start painting, you can see that we have our pattern. And if I lift up my pencil and place it back down, you can see all that it does is it makes the opacity a little bit stronger and starts filling in some of that transparency without overlapping the pattern. Very nice. So to take a pattern really to the next level, what we're going to do is adjust the shape source. So come over here to shape source. I'm going to three finger swipe to delete that and we'll make a couple strokes. This is the base of our pattern and this is the base of the shape of the brush. So I'm going to go ahead and edit, import file, and we'll come back to VT Brush Builder. And this time we're going to use the shape source because we're in the shape editor. Now you can scroll through all these shape sources. Most of these are made from scans of real ink textures and markers and pens and stuff like that. Some of them are made inside Procreate by drawing a specific shape that I wanted. Uh, this one, for example. So we're going to scroll through and find a shape that I think would fit this texture well. Well, I'm really liking the look of Ink Blotch 17. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Again, this is inverted, so two fingers. And now we have the shape selected properly. So if we draw a straight line down, you can see, well, Tim, that didn't really change anything. Well, 
Now we have to come over to stroke path and start adjusting our shape to make it more visible. By dragging up the spacing, you can see that the pattern has now totally separated. And to show you this a little bit better, I'm going to take the preview size up, clean off the canvas and show you here. So now you can see that it's separated itself into these squares that we have in the shape source. It kind of looks like a square because the texture is not bleeding through all that much. So the first thing we're going to do is come down to Apple Pencil and we're going to drag the bleed up. You can see that this adjusts how much of the texture is getting eaten away and how much of it is visible. So I'm going to drag it just about right here. And that's going to give us a nice texture going on here with our shape source. The next thing we're going to do to make this brush a little bit better is come over to dynamics and increase the size jitter and increase the opacity jitter. What this does is treat each of these stamps like a separate brush stroke. Even though it's one brush stroke, treat each of these as separate. And let's go ahead and adjust the size between each of those separate stamps. The same goes for opacity. What it's going to do is randomize the opacity values for each step in that brush stroke. Now, if we're going to use this as a pattern brush, we want it to be filling. We don't want all of these gaps here like this. So what we can do is take our stroke path, turn the spacing back down a little bit, maybe increase the jitter. And you can start to see we have a nice pattern fill brush. And it's got some really good texture in it, so it's not just a boring flat pattern brush. And most people usually stop at the pattern part and they don't go ahead and adjust the shape source and kind of dial it in to make it also a texture brush. To kind of amplify this nice texture that we've created, we're going to go ahead and adjust the flow setting. By taking the flow all the way up, it's going to lay down less paint depending on the pressure that I'm using. So if I'm using very light pressure, almost nothing is happening. And as I add more and more and more pressure, you can see that texture really start to build. So now we have a nice textured pattern brush. Come over down here to about this brush, give it a name. I'm going to call it textured line pattern. If you want to save these brush settings for later, go ahead and click create new reset point. But before you do that, you probably want to give it a name or give yourself a name. Of course, this is me. So I'll put Timmy and you can put a little signature there. Create new reset point. Very good. Press done and we're done over here. You can adjust the size, but you probably already know that. And now we can lay down this pattern. Since the brush is set to that texture setting that allows you to overlap strokes without resetting the pattern, the one main downfall of that is that your brush size will not change the pattern size. Depending on the size of your canvas, your brush is going to look bigger or smaller. Since the pattern doesn't scale with brush size, you will have to come in manually, click on your brush, come to grain and increase the scale. Now you can see that that scaled it up much larger. So you're going to have to tweak that setting depending on the size of canvas you normally work with, and you'll have a really nice texture brush. Now I want to make the brush size a little bit bigger because if I'm trying to use it as a fill brush, um, I don't want to have to cover the whole canvas like this. So we're going to go back into the brush. We're going to come down to properties and take this maximum size and crank it up a bit. And that should do the trick. Now, when we take our brush size all the way up, you can see that it's much bigger. We have a much bigger brush stamp here. I think that would be a little bit too big for what I'm wanting. So I'm going to take the brush size down a little bit. I'm going to go back into the brush, go to the grain settings and turn the scale down just a little bit. So this is the brush that we have so far. And I don't really like how this brush texture stays in the same position every time. So we're going to go and do a small adjustment in the shape source. We're going to come down here to rotation. And we're going to turn that all the way up, which activates follow stroke, which means your brush will now turn with your stroke. Not to be confused with the new barrel roll feature, 
which would be this setting here. We can also turn the scatter up a little bit and press done. Now when we're painting with this brush, you can see that the pattern is moving around more. It's not just staying as that same square. I might even want to turn the spacing down a little bit more. And now we have a really nice pattern texture brush. If you're not a big fan of how blocky this looks, you can easily come over here to shape source, edit the shape source, and import a more round shape. For example, let's try hatching mark one. Press done. And now we have a much softer brush. This is all up to you, of course. You can experiment and find what's going to work best for your project. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make a seamless pattern brush that doesn't overlap. If you're in Visual Tribe, go ahead and subscribe to Pro, get all of these downloads, and you can make your very own brush sets. If you're watching this on YouTube, then go ahead and hit the like, subscribe, all of that stuff, and come over to our free community at visualtribe.app. And there's free downloads you can get a hold of, tutorials, creative articles, and so much more that you're not going to want to miss. So go ahead and join, subscribe, whatever, and I'll see you in the next one.